Most gracious kindness, have it. What a painful thing. Even if they would do. But it does for me just to walk me to a new day, Lord. A day that I've never seen before, a day I'll never see again. In this world and the world to come. And I just so thankful and grateful that you gave me another one more opportunity to say thank you, Lord. One more opportunity to praise you. So I want to praise you this morning. Who you are for where you are. Praise you, dear Lord, for you being God. Praise you for you being God all by yourself. Praise you this morning, dear Lord, that you're my God and my Lord. Oh, Lord, and that you chose me. I'm so grateful and thankful this morning, oh, Heavenly Father, for what's done for me, Lord. And let's praise you this morning for you being God and loving and kind and compassionate, God. Giving God. Even God, if you make promise, you don't go back on it. Lord, I'm just so grateful. I'm so thankful for you, John, for me, Lord. And I ask you just to continue to bless me through this day as I, as I conduct your Sunday school. Let's thank you when you woke me this morning. I was clothed in the right mind. Had a portion of my health and strength, oh Lord. You picked me up this morning and you started me out on my way. And Lord, you didn't leave me high and dry. And we're so grateful and thankful that you're being a God of promise. That you don't go back on your promise. Thank you, Lord, that I didn't hear the disturbing phone calls this morning over the course of the night to this hour. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. I haven't never seen you be with your Lord. I ask you to just continue to bless their health. They bless their family and their household. They going out and coming in. Thank you to bless me the same. This morning. Bless my health. Bless my family, my house, they're going in the country. Going out and coming in, Lord, and I should just bless the church family as a whole this morning. Bless their family this morning. Bless their health. Bless their going to the company. Bless the pastor for his lady. Lord, I should just keep them giving them that equal nature, that, 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 that uh, power that could keep them going. So they could continue to lead your people to the cross. Dear Lord, so this blessing this morning. Bless all across this planet this morning from north to south, east to west. May that other cover of all. The Lord, just be with me as I go through to your, conduct your son's school lesson. Lord, I pray when it's all said and done. Well, actually, actually I want to ask you to bless the Sunday school too, Patella, this morning. He asks for more wisdom and knowledge and understanding of you. Lord, I ask you to just. The best son of good teacher this morning as he conduct your son of school lesson. And Lord, I pray when it's all said and done, somebody will get some out of this lesson this morning. Show them how love is. But love comes from. That the love of the world is not the love they want. They want that love of God. So just be with us. Let them understand what the difference between the world of world love and your love. This is action just do the name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you again this morning. This is August 11th. I tell you, time is getting away from us. And we're going to talk about redeeming our time, too. And that's what we need to do. This is week 11, uh, week 11 of our Sunday school bridges, building bridges. See, we are bridge builders. We are not, we are not, we don't tear down bridges. We build bridges. And so, uh, like I said, it's August 11th, time is getting away from us, escaping us. This morning, now, top of the day is God's love and root. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is we just explore the effect of our hope and eternal life on our present way of living. Because we know that when we will be hope. Because we know that we will be like Christ when he appear. We leave sin behind. Pursue the righteousness. And righteousness he has demonstrated for us and made possible. And let's say if he had a king, 
on that level center now, where we'd have been now. We would have been out, we would have been on our way out of sin. That's one thing, sure. We'll be so deep in sin now. We don't, ooh, I wouldn't want to be there. But that's what we're going to explore this. We're going to explore the Lord that God has demonstrated to us and made possible. And I can say that. You know, I like to always talk about redeeming our time before we get into the lesson. And so that's what we need to be doing. We need to redeem our time. Do good things. Do things right now for Christ. We don't need to be out there doing the stuff what the world wants us to do. We need to be doing what Christ wants us to do. We need to be out there bringing as many as we can to the cross. Tell them how good and loving and kind Christ is. That's what he does for us. And we need to be out there telling others. But Christ is done. We just had to have that hope and faith in Christ. We don't want to worry about this. Do the car that find out the big man town. Because he'll say the word on it, those will soon pass away. But the word of God will never pass away. It'll be until the end of time. So that's what we need to depend on, put our trust in. I know it'd be, we, we like to have a big bank account, like a house, a car, and everything going good. But he said, he don't, keep, he don't mind us having that. But he said, don't put that ahead of him. Say, seek thee the kingdom of heaven. All that stuff be added. It ain't for everybody to have this. And this is what we got. What we got to understand. Everybody ain't gonna have this. He said the, the poor are always be among us. But we, we, what we need is stay on, put our faith in it, and worry. Because soon, one day, all this stuff gonna pass away. And if you've been laying around waiting on a big bank account, you gonna uh, call and find out another. You gonna miss out. You're going to miss out on crossing that Christmas sea, going into that uh, state of delight. So let's get out there and show love to one another. You know, and, and care for one another. You know, there's people like this on the street that's unfortunate. I mean, it, it, sorry to happen to them, but that's the way they wanted to be, but we still have to help them. So let's be out about our power with business. Showing love to one another, cause we don't show love to one another. Do as we can do God's will. We'll never make it become part of God's family. Another one hanging around too long, but we don't do this. We'll never become part of God's family. Okay, let's go to the lesson. I like I said, it's all August eleventh, twenty twenty four. We let the week eleven of our Sunday school lesson. Top of the day, Christ is Lord. That's the rule. What our studies about today it says. People's can behave currently when love is not the rule of their of their thoughts and behavior. But he does say that all who who look forward to Christ's coming have his love and purity and model for their own life. And that's what I was trying to say. We don't want to get hung up on having to find how to make money and waiting for this him. Like I say, everybody ain't going to have it. It, 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 it. We always be a mom. What we need to do is, is make sure that we put our faith and our trust in God's word. Father, love is the key. Love is the key that God is love. That's going to get us to that, across that crystal sea and to that see that the light. We don't want to make it to, to the strand. It can't go across. That's why we got to follow God's word. No doubt. We gonna have to follow this word. We gonna have to follow his word. Now, the word is going to get us from that golden strand across that crystal sea into that city of light. We can't take no car with a fine house money. We can't take that cross there. So you just use it. If you got it, just use it to do whatever you got. Some of us gonna have to suffer. But he's gonna take all that away. One day we just gotta trust his word. Trust him in his word. Not that he ain't doing nothing for you. Trust him in his word. The biggest part of part is coming. Put your trust in God's word. 
Oh, you go. Oh, this we gonna talk about today. It's gonna be coming from Brady John, chapter three, verses one through ten. What we gonna talk about today? We're gonna talk about God's love, being God, God's cheery and holy. Accept God's love and do what we got to do, and we'll become children of God. This is what we want. Don't want to waste our time out here trying to stay here and have a fine home, fine tap of money. We ain't going to stay here. We just feel us in this bad land. It's passing us. And if you fail, follow God's word and do his will, I'm feel sorry for you. Okay, about background. Let's see what our about background is saying to us. This is, this is, this is, this is real good. I'm the kind of person that like to stay with preachers, stay with the scriptures. I don't want to bear you for all the scriptures. The next thing I know, I'm off somewhere else. I'll stay close with the scriptures, with the scriptures, and I will elaborate somewhere a little bit off the scriptures, but I stay close with the scriptures. Look what the Bible background is telling us this moment. It is better to, to be loved by God or loved by the world. <clears throat> it's the end of Eyes of the author of First John, there was no comparison between being loved by God or being loved by the world. And love of the world, love of the world. Love of the world is disappointment. It's always disappointment when you come out the love of the world. The love of God is guaranteed. That's the basic point, the basic ingredients. To this world we cry. Love. As Father and loving one another. God's love is, is lavished on us. And the change in us is so great the author said that the world no longer recognizes us. <laughs> Good. The transformation continues. And when Christ returned, this is not just him, I'm talking about the ones that have a rough time. We will be like him. Like I said, you don't want to just hang around like that, just trying to wait for this. God ain't never done nothing for us. God has did many, many great things for us. Poor people, this is what I'm telling you. He did many, many great things for brought us safely down to us. And when you put your trust in God and do what he say, he gonna, his grace is going to lead us home. Is that to continue in sin means that we have not truly seen God and do not really know him. Jesus didn't come to just make a debt in evil and the devil. That was work. But a but to destroy it entirely. The one of the primary ways in way sin is manifested in people life is through hating others. So we don't want to hate it, hate nobody, man. If we do that, that's that's love and order. He he didn't come just make a dent. In the devil's work, but to destroy it entirely. And this is what it says one of the primary ways of sin is manifested in people. It lies is through hating one another. And that's why I say we need to redeem our time. We need to get back and look back and see what we need to be doing. We need to be Father God's word. And we as Christians, we're supposed to be out and help. We got hope. We need to be out there telling them ones that don't have no hope. The crisis is for me and you, too. If you don't have what I got, I'll help you out. But we need to follow God's word. That's what we need to look at. Because all this stuff that I made, I got, you ain't got, I ain't going to have it because it's all going to disappear. But what I'm standing on now is what it is. Is that one of the primary ways that sin is manifested is through hating another. 
And if we are born of God, isn't that it here? If we are born of God, we will respond to others. In love, we talking about other things. Respond to others in love. Brother, you know, all man do like him bowling on the streets. And to see somebody, he said, if you do it at least to the one of the brothers, the one of somebody, you do it unto me. This is what we need to be out there doing. Showing that love to us. Somebody on the street, we call it bum and all that stuff. Show love to them. Give up to them. Give up something. They like went to Walgreens. Uh, I don't know what day it was. There was a young lady out there. Sir, sir. I said, what is it you want? They like, can you buy me some drink? Yeah, come on. I said, come on in. I come in, I bought her, she picked what she wanted to drink, paid for what she left. Now, I don't mean I had to go down the road and do it to the next one. I did it to one. And when I did that to her, I did that from my heart and love. So I got the love of God. That's what he said. If we are born of God, we will respond to others in love. That's our bad background. And this thing... Whole thing about our business, you know, Christ is love as the roof. It's what's gonna show get us through. And look into our lesson and just see just what our lesson is talking about this morning. Uh finish it. It's no, we already know it's by God. Christ is love. Let's look and see what else is. Look at first John. John three verse one, two, three, children of God. Now how how are we gonna become changed of God? I was to show it. First John 3 and 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. And if it did not know him, he ain't going to know us. Now we're followers of him. That was what it say. Look at verse 2, it says, Dear friend, now we are children of God, and what we will be uh, be has not yet been made known, but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, but we shall see him as he is. Verse 3 says, And now, and who has this hope in him, and all who have this hope in him, purify themselves just as he ought. Now, go back to the, to the somebody that don't have anything. I don't know if it costs your job, and they pay enough money, or you trying to live or be, I mean, above your means. But what we talking about, the ones that want to be poor. This is what we you gonna have to do. Do you might say, "Well, God ain't gave me this, and God ain't gave me that." When he said this word, it be poor I'll always be among. We all can't have be rich. What kind of society was well, we all had everything? But this is what I'm talking about right here. He said, "Those who did not know." Let me see why that. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he are. But we got to put our hope and trust in God. That's what we don't have to put it at. Because, you know, God's hope is eternal. Hope on having a nice house, nice car, money, all that stuff will soon pass away. And if that's what you've been, had your heart set on doing it, that is coming one day, you're going to lose out. Christ is coming one day. Not to get rid, get us and rid us of all this stuff that you're going through now. But you got to put your trust and faith in him. He's worried. Okay. Let's look at our commentary here and see. He's going to leave us more into the fear of God. Look at it. <laughs> Excuse me. 
the theme of love is prevalent. In John's New Testament writing, he here he talks about the love of God, the Father being lavished on us, bestowed generous and unlisted liberty. The result of this great love is that we have the opportunity to be called children of God. Don't you want to be called children of God? So when you get in that, stay in it. Don't be looking for that. But he'll bill you up and put money and all this stuff on you. Bill yourself up. Like what it says. The theme of, of love is prevalent. In John's New Testament writing, he is talking about the love of God, the Father being lavished on us. It's still generous and evangelistic and liberty. The result of this great love is that we have the opportunity to become called children of God. And that's what we work on. That's what I'm working on. I might have a car, a house, and a little money, but I'm working. I'm, I'm standing on God's word. Because he already told me over and over in his, in his word that this stuff ain't going to stand. He said to me, and I think Matthew said, uh, don't be your treasures up on this earth. We will tear it up in hell. With rough, speed, and all this can't penetrate. They can't, they can't get that when you build your love and trust and hope and faith in God. He said the result of this great love is that we have the opportunity to be called children of God. We grow to look more like Him. Not in our physical appearance, but in our attitude and action, how we treat and love one another, how we do this, how we do our in our daily walk as Christians. We need to show love to our fellow Christians and to our fellow man. Help them when they are down and out. Get them to understand between what the world got off and what God got off. All that stuff he's talking about now, I'm talking about now, going out and get you a fire, call you a big fine job, and, and you're off. All that stuff going to pass away. You don't want to worry about that. I <clears throat> say, I got to worry about all that. He's uh, happening for me. <clears throat> it might not happen for you, but this is what I'm telling you right now. It's better than having that. Sometimes we get all that and get carried away and go the other way. But that'd be how I come out with God. That's what he's trying to tell you. He said, don't let put no other God before him. We said, we grow to look like, to look more like him. Not in a physical appearance, but in our attitude and our action. Why? Because of this, the world does not know us. We don't recognize us anymore. Why? Because we are not part of the world. We are not part of, of that world. And that's what you get back over here. Well, no, anyway, we don't want to be part of that. We want to be part of God's kingdom. Once we God the world, we don't even know us. But like I said, they didn't know him. We know more play by the old rules of serving the self first and hating those who just like us. Uh, it might sound like, hey, how can they want us to do that? Because it is the love, it's the only way to go. It's the only way to go to play on that field. And we tell you not. And if I lay it back over here, and then you go that way. And what are you going to say? Yeah. The effect of, of hope and eternal life are they will live because we know that our present will live, but we know that we will be like him when he appears. We believe sin behind the love, the, the righteousness, he has demonstrated for us and made possible for us. This is what we need to follow. We need to follow his word because if we try to follow the way of the world, 
It's always going to be trouble. We don't have anything for us. Somebody's been trying to tell us forever. He told you something else, and he said, he's a made man. He said, you need to follow me. I follow the world. I'm not going to hold you captured here. Either be with me or be with the world. You got your own choice. But if you want to do that, he, he showed you this. If you want to try to do that, do it that way. You're going down the wrong road. Put your trust and hope and faith in, in Christ. Follow him. But it's true that there is, is, there is a definite change in us when we become children of God. <clears throat> That's not the same, but I just got to bait in Jesus. But we are still work, it's still working progress. That ain't gonna just happen either. You gotta work, it's still working progress. This is a working progress thing. We keep on following Christ and showing love. And to rewards or dislike us or whatever it is. If we keep on doing that, it might be a rough road, but just don't get off of it. Say, I'm tired. Keep on coming. It said. It said. It, there is a definite change in us when we become children of God through faith in Jesus Christ, but we are still working progress. What we will ultimately be has not yet been made known. This point of, of God, of God's oncoming work for transformation in our life, when Christ return, we will then, when Christ return, we will know what we, we'll be like. We will we'll be like him. Not in physical appearance, but in our hearts. Those who did not know Jesus. Personally, when we walk this earth, have read the Bible story and set a set of work. Despite what the, he might have looked like, <clears throat> but we one day will see him as he really is. Boy, well, that's what I want to do. Oh, we stuck out in this world and, and don't we're trying to deal with the other world. I can't get out of the world, but I don't have to be of it. This is what he's trying to tell us. Verse 3 said, It is Christ who purifies us, but we also have the, op the responsibility to purify ourselves. Our cooperation is needed in the process. So if we don't cooperate and do the same thing, we can just sit out there and don't do nothing. God can't do that. We can read his word and see follow his word. And then we get out there and put our, put, put our work to action. Then we can help ourselves. That's what we need to do. We can't sit back and say, well, we let God do that. That's the same thing if you got a job. This work ain't gonna this work ain't gonna get done without you. You gotta, you gotta be part of that. Then not just in physical appearance, but the whole person in first Christ I said in verse three. It is Christ who purifies us. <clears throat> but we also have a responsibility to purify ourselves. Our cooperation is needed in progress. God does not force anyone to love him. He does not force anyone to change. It is God's power to work, power at work. But we must be open to let it him work. That's the right. first part I was in. Christ Jesus of God. That's what we gotta do. We gotta help, help. We can't just take back and let God and we gotta put out work in progress. Look at our next part of our lesson. Look at John, John 3, 4, chapter 3, verse 4 to 6. Seeing and knowing. Let's see what they're saying. Look at verse 4. Everyone who sin breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawless. Verse 5, but you know that he appeared 
But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sin. That's why he came. Take away the sins of the world. And in him is no sin. The sin is a lead. When you know, when you, like I was reading the letter, you have to go cry that deep down in your soul. When you know you're in a sin or did something wrong to somebody, or, yeah, cry deep down in your soul. Ask God to forgive you. But you know that he, that he appeared so that he might take away our sin. And in him there is no sin. Verse 6 says, no one who lives in him keeps on sinning. But one who pretends to sin has either seen, seen him or know him. No one who pretends to sin has either seen him or know him. Seeing and knowing. Let's see what our commentary got to say about that. Look at our commentary at Voice 4 and 5. The, the mosaic law spells out that or is that what behavior and approximate uh, mosaic law spells out what behavior and <laughs> approximate the God's people failing to keep the law of sin. Jesus came to take away our sin so that we are no longer in violation of God's sin. Verse 6 say, every law Every long time follower of Christ my stomach at points. But no one who lives in him keeps on sinning. John did not say that Christians are not able to sin anymore, but that they are able not to sin. Our free will remains, that's what I was talking about earlier, when he made it. Our free will, he gave us free will, let's see what that's saying. Our free will remains, but we have to have the power to make right right choice. John saw the transformation power of Christ as being so great that anyone who continues to sin probably is not ready. Probably is not ready. Seeing seeing or known. Christ, known Christ. But some churches group link this verse with the concept of eternal security. Saying that that someone who seemed to be a Christian but then fell up, fell away uh never truly never truly a Christian. In the first place, so when we when we say we're a Christian, we gotta stand up for that. To, to say it's gonna be Paul say if you walk with Christ, there's gonna be consequences. Sometimes it might wind up being bad. But we talking about like the uh the souls who sold the seeds. When hard times come. We got to make sure that we're standing firm and strong. If we ain't got our um, roots in good ground, we're going to fall away. That's why we need to be have our seed planted and good soil. So all the time comes, music comes, it's going to try to take you out of it, being a Christian. But we got to make sure that we're standing firm. Standing firm. Sure. There's some churches group link. This very that the concept of eternal security says that someone who seemed to be a Christian but when the dead Paul fell away, but never Christian from birth. So when you get up and stand out and say you're Christian, you got to you got to show that you're a Christian. I mean, we're talking about the 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 the, 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 the source so of the sea. Some fell on good ground, some fell on stones, some fell in stone which choked away. But some fell on good ground. That's what we need to make sure we we throw our seeds on good ground. So when there's trouble come, we can just stand it. 
they can stand burn. Okay. You know what they're saying? Well, it's never true that Christian in the first place. So all the girls say we're Christian, we got to make sure that we are to prove that. I can say when eat throws plant of grain, throw some old rocks that grew root, but they didn't have no ground of grain. It's scarcity. It's all scarcity. And so forth, planted in thorns. And then thorns choke it out. But when we say we come to this, we got to plant our soil in good ground so it can be real firm in the ground. Okay. That's seen and know Now, here you go our next thing, 1 John 3 7 through 10. No more sin. No more sin. Let's get in and see what that's saying. Look what that writer's telling us this morning, verse 7. Dear Cherry, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is. We got to stand for So when the time comes, we got to stand with Christ. We got to stand with him. Paul and all the other guys stood for him. They lost their lives, but they stood for him for what they believe. And if we don't get out there while we're playing, we got to be willing to stand for him too. But Chris is here now. I say we might not have to go through have to do what they know. But what we got to do, we got to study, bring hope to others. Let's keep on going. I heard a preacher preaching one time that about this persecution, all this stuff that they we got on across the water. So it's gonna it's coming to our laying on our shore. And we've been enjoying the freedom of worship on our own. But we but we now if that persecution hit our shore, we gotta be willing to stand for it. Give our life up. Just pray that we don't never have to do that. But you better be ready. I'm telling you that. See, the one who does, does what is right is right, just as he is right. But he says, the one who does what is sinful is of the evil, of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the, from the beginning. The season, the reason, the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. We tell us how to do it this morning to, to write them. We just stand the word for God, stand for God, and show their love and say, He said, first doing this, I want to try all the spirits. All of them ain't going to let you talk about no God, no Christ. They're the ones who are born. They're the ones who are born. Because the devil had been sinned from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil. Verse 9 says, No one who is born of God is a to sin. Why? Because God's seeds remain in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. And we say we were born of God. We saw our seed. We got to make sure we plant our seed in good ground. If you plant it on, on, on rocks, that means you heard the word, but you didn't accept the word. And then it's going on down. But we need to make sure. We, we, we say this thing, we need to plant our seed in good ground. I'm going to say right now, we can keep on going, but one day we might prove that. We had to, might have to prove that we'll. Follow God. And there is no turning back. Like the sons I have decided now to follow God. But we got to make sure our, we plant our seeds in good ground. So have good sun to grow on. Grow. Verse 10 says, This is how we know who the children of God is. Or who are and who the children of the devil are. Is there anyone who does not do what is right in the sight of God? Cheer. Or else anyone who does not love that brother and sister. 
we can say this, but God knows our heart. He knows how we feel about our brother and sister. Sometimes we might have to go through some things up and down with our brother and sister. But that's when we got our, we plant our seeds in the ground. That we can know we can continue to have that love of God and our of our brother and sister. That's in the church I'm talking about. And continue to show love to us. Then look at our commentary and see what our commentary is going to continue to, to talk about. No more sin. So when we stand firm with our brothers and sisters, when they kind of take things that out of the way to us, we got to be standing strong. This is a brother and sister in Christ that we told me that might be weak in that faith. We strong in our faith. We need to help them. Our commentary is saying, verse 7, righteousness is the condition of being in right standing with God. If we ain't truly in right standing with God, we might fuck them. When our brothers and sisters say things to us. But we need to make sure we stand firm, show them that we are locked in and out, righteous and faithful. Help them out. Your righteousness is the condition of being in right standing with God. Who is himself righteous? But there's nothing there. But righteousness is more than just a state of being or a stature that is assigned to us. And the evidence of our righteousness is seen in the doing of the things we do. That's why I gotta say, we, we gotta help our brother and sister as we can face it. <laughs> And he's strong in him. That's why I say we can't, we can't just leave him down there. Got to bring him back up. Hey, this ain't the way we supposed to be doing as Christians. You got to stand strong in your faith. And show that love of God. That's what we are here for. The ones that are strong in your faith need to be that help. The one that's not. Let's look at our... Let me finish reading my commentary. Look at verse 8. Sin was introduced into the world through the serpent. The devil in the garden of Eden, in Genesis 3 and 1, also in Revelation 12 and 9, sin is the devil's focus. By getting people to sin, he robbed them of their relationship and the future with God. See, when you don't want to try to help yourself, people of the world, uh -uh, people that live in the world, you got to get out of mouth there. Because Satan going to make you believe that that's where it's at. That's where the sin is going to go in. People can behave currently when love is not in the root of their thoughts or behavior. But it does say that all work forward to Christ's coming. All look forward to Christ's coming. Has his love and purity. And his mom is set up down. You know what I'm saying? We got to do, we got to, we say, because we know that we will be like him when we appear. We leave sin behind and pursue righteousness as he demonstrated for us. They us up. We gotta continue following God's will. We don't wanna try to want to live in the world. That is. But he's telling you that right now. You don't want to live out there in that world. Try to show that love out there. God loves on the way to go. Real love is on the way to go. And real love is through Christ Jesus. He robbed on the relationship with God. But the Son of God came to destroy the devil's work. And we're going to get on shit with him. I'm going to get on the shit with him. I ain't going to be on stay on that shit with the devil. Ain't nothing there. Ain't nothing there for you. I'm talking about the one that's down and out, poor people out of there. He don't want to stay on that shit with him. You just want to Christ and never did nothing to me. The Christ got something for you. If you put your trust in him, 
to bathe in him, get on that ship and come on. It's going to be the end of the tunnel for you. More than you can ever imagine in your mind. Leave all this stuff behind right now. Get on the ship with Christ. Let go with him. Brother Jay said, the devil already robbed you of all that stuff, but the Son of God came to destroy the devil's work. So this is what made God love and the righteousness we know and his cheering oh, that's available to us. It's available to us. You know what I said with it? And be content and be patient. Because at the end of that time, that's not never uh, more than you can ever imagine in your mind. You don't share with God. Now, verse 9, John emphasizes again that no one who is born of God through Christ will continue to sin. John emphasizes again that no one who is born of God, who is born of God, through Christ will never continue to sin again. But it in 6, 9, 11. Now, look at it. It says, if God... Seed has been planted in us, it will grow until it takes over the whole God. It got planted in the ground, so it can continue to grow. See, I'm coming through for, for, uh, do this with Christ, but it said back over there, it said, uh, still, what do we do? Just like I said, let me show you something. It said, I like that too. It said, it first, uh, it said if God seed has been planted in us, it will grow until it takes over the whole God. That's why I say you got to be planting good soil because we're we still, we still growing. We are still growing. And if the seed been planted in us, it said it will work, grow until it takes over the whole God. We're strong in faith. But we got to keep doing this here. When Christ comes back, he's going to fix it up, finish it up for me. But if we ain't been working on nothing, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't going to. We got to plant our soil in good ground. So when the trial of civilization come, we can be able to withstand that. So keep on going. Put in that good ground and keep on going. Say, God, see, you haven't planted it out. It will grow until it takes over the whole God. But it says that the world does not like to hear it. Man like to hear that. They're going to try to snatch it away from it. So they're going to try to snatch it away from it. They say the world does not like to hear it. But everyone falls into one of two categories. We are either the children of God or we are the children of the devil. You know, the talk about the stats, uh, talking about that, uh, one day I was listening to it. And we either cheer on God or cheer on the devil. He said, of course, God is ultimately the one who knows the sure. Who is him? God said, we are cheer on the devil. We're going to still be doing what the world is doing. We're going to be still doing how the world operates. But when we come cheer on the God, we're going to be different. Well, they don't know us no more. You know, we don't got out of it of the world. And got up on that ship with Christ and, and sailing with Christ. Because like I said, at the end of the voyage, it's good sometimes it's more than you can imagine in your heart of your mind. Well, Christ got a story for us. See, God is ultimately the one who knows for sure who is who. But we can't Observe how the people live. Anyone who does not do what is right or does not love one another is what? Is not God's share. He wants to be God upon his children, follow Christ. We, he's like, we identified who we are. Christ knows who we are. But the ones that ain't, ain't doing it, they follow him and showing love. You know, I'm mad at them. You know, really so you just do this little lesson I just brought to you. The lesson Christ just brought to you. 
God knows who's who. And what is what? Why? Because the ones who choose God, they're going to do what's right. They're going to say love to one another. It's not just the ones in the world, but the ones that's on the ship. When you when you when you when you're all weak and you're bad, that's what we're here for to help you up. I can't leave you there because I need you to help me continue on showing up, bringing others to the cross. Tell me, I gotta stop back and make sure that my brothers and sisters come on and ain't falling back. Bring them up. Reach back and get them, pick them up. Them, don't give up. Don't fight. Come on, let's go. We got to bring, we got to do God's will. We got to bring up many as we can to the cross. You know, one who does not, who does not do what is right, we already know who they are. They still on that wagon with the devil. But the one is who does right, who does not love other deals. It's the only ones who does not do what is right or does not love one another is not the top children of God. <laughs> the ones that don't do the right thing, God already knows who they are. He shows me that. Yeah. The ones they come with me, come with me. He's a child of the Spirit, because all the spirits ain't going to say, you ain't going to be in touch with God about them. It's not like the world with Paul. Oh, no. Man, if you don't tell me what the Paul said, all this other stuff, I can blast me. All they care, you're going to bring on the gospel. And that's what we need to do. We're to bring that gospel. And right now, we ain't got to worry about being pers persecuted and all that. We have freedom now, us as Christians here now, to bring this on. We ain't got to worry about getting beheaded or crucified or something or whatever may happen. Not that, but we got our freedom here in the United States. And we ain't playing on keeping it. So when we vote this year, this is the election year, we're going to vote for the ones that's doing the right thing. The ones do the right thing. Gonna do the right thing. But the ones that's going to talk about what he's going to do, the ones that did something to him, I did nothing to him. That's all the devil. He gonna take your freedom away. He doesn't never know what he gonna do if he get in now. So that's why we need to make sure that we do the right thing. Up to the right person. So we have freedom, so we still have freedom of worship here, and we won't have to worry about being persecuted. We gonna vote for the right, for righteousness, room for our uh, democracy, so we can wake up every morning and we worship God. And, do what we want to do, have what God wants us to do. But this other person ain't gonna, uh, he, he ain't got that. In, look at him. He ain't got this in his heart. But right. He always want to go back. If it ain't for him, if he ain't, if he ain't called on him, if he ain't the one, and you don't follow him, you go. Now look at that. If you don't stand for him, he, you out of here. But when you stand for God, God ain't gonna. Do that. But that's what we must all be do, standing for righteousness and love one another. When you vote this here, we'll make sure you vote for righteousness. Love. Show the love to you to keep our pockets strong, even our freedom that we can get up and worship God when we get it. But if you do that, and vote the wrong way, all that might be taken away from you. But you know what the other part is, they don't know it, that's right and wrong. Like I said, if you ain't, if you don't, you have to do what's right. And if you don't have a place to come, what's right? Come back to anything. Water 626 strong, what's right? Put on your DPS and bring it right on over there. Right now, we count it down because like three fell in the church, but we on YouTube. Be on YouTube, you can look at it it's Facebook every Sunday morning. It's 11 o'clock, it'll be on Facebook. We'll be back in our church. God will be back in the church. And but like I say, if you don't have a place of worship, come back to there. We're a Bible teaching church. 
We don't touch with everybody, somebody. We ain't saved right now. He can be saved in the morning. If you just put your trust in God and believe that God sent his son and begat his son down on this earth, that was my sins and your sins and sins of the world. And on the third day, he went, he went out on the other cross and died on the other cross, went into the grave. On the third day, God raised him from the dead. And if you believe that in your heart, in the morning, you can be saved. Let us pray. Most gracious kind and heavenly Father, come again before you just feel the Lord with a heart of thanks and praise. Thank you, Graver. As you woke up this morning, thank you for your Sunday school this morning, Lord. You got a good Sunday school here this morning. Thank you for that writer. How he, how you put in him to explain it to us this morning. How you gave it to me to bring to your people this morning. And we got to show love. Love is the main ingredient. From the beginning, that it's going to be there to the end. The love, the care of the love. Everyone, well, this is the only way to go. Love, the love of God, not the love of the world. Not the the other guy has got the love of the world. On him, he's been on doing damage to you anyway. But the ones on the other party got the love of God and making sure we keep our freedom. And so on so you vote this this thing. Oof. For the love of God. I'm walking in the love of God. The Lord said, that's so great. Thank you for your word. How you brought it to it, laid it out. And dear Lord, just thank you for thank you and thank you and thank you. I'll be with us throughout the rest, rest of the day. It's actually in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen.